and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. American Vice President Mike Pence has begun his Middle East tour, visiting leaders in Egypt and Jordan before arriving in Israel later today. But the Vice President's trip is already looking like an uphill battle. Pence has just met with fierce protests in Jordan, where anger over President Trump's Jerusalem decision is still very fresh. Originally scheduled for last month, this trip was supposed to help boost Trump's, quote, ultimate deal for Middle East peace between Israel and the Palestinians. But that discussion has likely taken a back seat to the more pressing debate of America's new foreign policy, which includes recognizing Jerusalem's Israel's capital and cutting over half its funding to the United Nations Aid Group for Palestinian Refugees. Pence's meeting with the King of Jordan poses an especially difficult paradox because a huge number of Palestinian refugees currently live in Jordan. Both Jordan and Egypt are critical regional leaders in helping broker any potential peace deal. Pence has told Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi yesterday that America is firmly behind a two-state solution if that's what Israel and the Palestinians still want. But with chants outside the United States Embassy in Jordan condemning America as, quote, the head of the snake, most Arab nations clearly no longer see America as an impartial negotiator on the matter any longer. The Palestinians have refused to meet with Pence at all during his visit, leading some to wonder if this trip isn't a little too late. After six months of near-frozen relations, Israel and Jordan have finally made amends. Diplomacy came to a standstill last summer when a terrorist tried to stab an Israeli guard outside Israel's embassy in Amman. The guard shot his attacker, but a Jordanian bystander was killed in the crossfire as well. But now, Israel is finally set to reopen the embassy, offering both an apology and a cash payment to the victim's family. This is a welcome end to a long diplomatic crisis. Good relations with Jordan have become increasingly critical, especially given the recent turmoil since President Trump's Jerusalem decision. Ironically, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu says that the United States is actually to thank for rebuilding this bridge, thanking both Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner and his advisor Jason Greenblatt for their quote, behind-the-scenes efforts. Diplomats have confirmed that Israel met most if not all of Jordan's demands in order to make amends. This includes an official apology for the incident that resulted in the death of a Jordanian civilian and a compensation of $5 million to the victim's family. The guard may or may not still face a trial over the incident, but Israel says the embassy will reopen to full activity immediately, finally ending the diplomatic standoff. After nearly a decade of inaction and the failure to make even an indictment against Israeli fraudsters operating in the Forex and binary options markets, agents of the FBI have now arrived in Israel for an investigation of their own. Focusing on Spot Option and UCOM Communications LTD, the FBI is pursuing information with regards to the defrauding of thousands of investors out of millions of dollars. UCOM CEO Lee Elbaz was already arrested and is awaiting trial after landing in JFK in September. Critics in Israel say that the FBI's presence here goes even further to show how little Israel's own police care about the issue. But with Israeli police liaising the operation and cooperating fully, the FBI's visit could just as well be evidence to the contrary. All that's left to do now is to wait. It seems that Israeli official Dali Gold, who has held many high-ranking positions including advisor to the Prime Minister and Israeli ambassador to the UN, has become the latest victim of a new series of hacks. A Turkish group calling itself the Turkish Cyber Army Ayildiz Team has taken credit for taking over Gold's Twitter account over the weekend, writing, quote, The Turks will never forget neither what is done nor what is evil, end quote. And, quote, Jerusalem cannot be the capital of Israel because Jerusalem is holy to Muslims and is the land of Palestine." End quote. Turkish hackers have indeed been quite busy with a rise in activity since President Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. The hackers also wrote that, quote, the Turkish Islamic Union will soon be established, end quote, but there's little evidence as to what the group meant by that. Dori Gold, who now leads a think tank in Jerusalem, has since regained control of his Twitter handle. The mini-market bill, which passed last week, shuts down nearly all business on the Sabbath, and though Tel Aviv and select few other areas are somewhat immune to the new ruling, the vast majority of the country is not. Now, well over 2,500 protesters have gathered in Ashdod, outside City Hall, calling to, quote, return Ashdod to Ashdodians. Help wanted ads for Shabbat inspectors have already gone up in the city, and enforcement of the new law as well as a similar city bylaw has begun. Citizens have named the law religious coercion and are even calling for the Ashdod mayor to resign. Protesters also stipulated that they're not against the religious, but want to tell the, quote, ultra-Orthodox members of Knesset to get your hands off Ashdod, end quote. Many from the Yeshatid opposition party also attended the demonstration after campaigning against religious influence on the public for many years. Party leader Yair Lapid said, quote, 
We came here to Ashdod because this insulting mini markets law must go. Ultra Orthodox coercion can't run the state of Israel. End quote. Proponents of the law continue to argue that the bill was necessary in preserving both the status quo as it relates to Sabbath observance in Israel, as well as the Jewish character of the country. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman, whose Israel Beitenu party is part of the coalition that backed the bill, also voted against the legislation, but took a softer tone than Lapid, saying that he predicts the law will further divide the nation, and that, quote, just as I respect those who go to synagogue on Shabbat, I expect them to respect those who go to buy coffee, end quote. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.